Hello everyone and welcome to my channel GoGeeko. Today we are talking about BigQuery versus Snowflake. I will be talking a little bit about Redshift and Oracle, but this is mainly about BigQuery and Snowflake as I feel Redshift is way behind BigQuery and Snowflake as Snowflake and BigQuery have made a lot of advancements versus Redshift is still playing catch up game. Data is the new oil, keep digging. So invest your time, resources in these new technologies and you know, you will benefit a lot from them. These are the main points. So for BigQuery, it's completely serverless, no need to choose compute versus in Snowflake, for the most part, you have to choose compute, whether it's a small, large, medium, extra large. It's not a big deal, but you know, it's still an extra thing which you need to do. In BigQuery, you can create AI and ML models just simply using SQL queries. And it is very, very fast performance. It's massively parallel processing database and so is Snowflake. Uh, and I will show some of the numbers in the later part of this video where I have ran queries and I will show how much BigQuery took versus how much Snowflake took. I hope you will stick with me until the end of this video where I can actually show the actual numbers where I have run different queries. Now Snowflake also gives pretty good performance uh, and it's, you know, it's scalable as is BigQuery. Snowflake can actually be used with any of the major cloud providers like AWS, Azure or Google. With BigQuery, the cons is, you know, you can, you mostly use that with only Google Cloud, right? So that's a big thing there versus in Snowflake, the cons is, is not completely serverless because you still need to define your compute and it can run AI and ML queries. I think they are working on it, but it's not quite there. And at least some of the use cases which I have seen, Snowflake is used mainly with NC SQL, you know, but not for the ALML. I'm sure there are ways to do it. But Google BigQuery provides as part of your SQL, you can run AI and ML models. And I will show some of those queries as well. So again, stick with me until end of this video where I'll be showing those queries. There are, these are some of the common points. These are both cloud-based and they both support NC SQL. Simple web-based interface for querying. It can also use third-party client tools like DBViewer and others. Very less administration overhead, especially compared to Amazon Redshift and others. Both are columnar storage. So that's why the read performance is very, very good. And they both are massively parallel processing. Your, pro your performance is really, really good, especially on the read side. Both can auto scale and can handle most companies' use cases with excellent performance. Some of the other points are BigQuery mainly charges by the bytes data you scan. So for example, $5 per terabyte you scan versus Snowflake mainly charges by how much compute you're using. Uh, for example, if you're using a large cluster or a large warehouse, they call their cluster or their compute as warehouse. So if you use a large warehouse for an hour, you may be charged for like $10 per hour. Again, these are just numbers, but you know, they are pretty close as with the enterprise you know, you have different pricing. Every enterprise can negotiate their pricing. This is a simple BigQuery interface. As you can see, it's very simple. You write your query here. You see the results here. There are execution details like how, you know, what it scanned, what was the full scan, things like that. You can see it here. There are your different data sets where you can choose what table, what schema. If you open these up, you will see it. So it's very simple. It actually shows uh, this query will process 24 KB when run. So this actually shows before you run the query. And this is pretty cool that it actually shows you how much bytes you're going to scan before you even run the query. So before you even get charged, you know, you know how many bytes you're going to scan. And that's really nice. You can do some exploration data, right? You know, you look at your data in terms of some of the simple reports ports so they, that capability is there too this is snowflake interface also very elegant very smart very simple to understand here you write queries here you see results and here your database and your schemas so this is your database this is your schema and then you have these different tables informational schema is nothing but you know it's like a metadata about all your data inside snowflake you know in oracle we have a data dictionary table so it's similar to that next i will show you some of the results i have got this is a very important um, excel and i will show you one by one 
if you look at this is mostly about BigQuery but then I have another Excel where I'll show you the comparison between Snowflake and BigQuery this is only for BigQuery so when I ran a count query on almost 1 million rows it scanned uh, you know 6.5 GB of data and it took only nine seconds like then I ran select so I have these different numbers and you can, you know, pause this video and you can look at it. I think one of the thing which I want to show like sort, like usually when you measure any database, the sort and the aggregates takes a lot of time because you have to get your data at one place and then, you know, you need to sort it. Like for 1 million, it took only 0.9 seconds, right? It's that's pretty fast, not even a second it took. Uh, and it scanned, you know, 30, 40, almost 40 gigs of data similarly with uh, aggregate right it took only 6.5 seconds you know even with joins it's like if you look at this is 23 billion records so it's a lot of data it only ran in you know almost 18 seconds now one thing you may want to see is like i've ran all these different queries rank and all that there's two points which i want to show you here one is with the insert right this one the count from new poc table so i created that previously in this case it was 1 million rows and it actually scanned zero bytes because this is very intelligent because it got it from the cache it knows that you ran the similar or the same query previously so it stored the results somewhere in the cache and it just gave you the data back from there it did not do any scanning so it was zero byte scan so it was a free query i didn't get charged anything for that and it, it took like only 1.2 seconds similarly you can see i did more count and again the byte scan was zero one thing which i want to show update right the update in this case everything else took few seconds but the update took one minute nine seconds for almost 150,000 rows and again you know with mpp databases updates are usually slow but again this is not very slow it's a decent performance but i want to highlight that you know your updates can be a little slower the other thing is the ml model i ran the ml query also and that took only 32 seconds it was a very small data set i want to throw that out also now here are some of the ml queries which i was talking about this is a classification model i created so this is the data set like okay i'm using this data set for census adult income then i first created three different set data for my training evaluation and prediction so if you're not familiar with uh, analytical models or analytics models you have to divide your data between you know training evaluation and prediction so you train your data on this data set then you evaluate the performance of it is how much accurate your model is and then finally you know you you can run your prediction so i created this input view now i ran a select count from input view then on top of the input view, I only use the training data set. Like if you see here, this is the data frame or the training I created. So now I am creating this model on the training data set and I'm creating logistic regression model and with other parameters. Then once this is created, I run my model. You know, this is the model I created, right? Census model. Then I'm using this model on the evaluation data frame. So then it ran and I see the results. When you see the results in BigQuery, it will show it's how much accurate it is. So it was 80% accurate. And you know, that depends upon your use case. What is the allowed accuracy you need and then finally you run the same model on your prediction data set or data frame in this case so that's how you run very quick simple ai and ml queries you run in bigquery now the final thing which i want to show you is snowflake versus bigquery this is also very important so i ran these standard queries these are very some of these queries are very complex queries and if you see i have oracle here i won't talk about oracle because if you look at this is the total time and most time oracle took so i won't talk much this is really about snowflake and bigquery now if you see this is ran on medium cluster this ran on large cluster so we can even ignore the medium cluster let's say a large cluster and we compare that with bigquery so these two numbers are the important ones and if you see in almost every number bigquery was running faster than snowflake if you look at the total time for all these queries and these are standard queries when you compare the two different databases and this is decent amount of data also so if this bigquery ran in you know 108 seconds 
versus it took 117 so it's not too much difference but there is still some difference and the other thing is this was run on the large cluster so that means it was little extra charge here now one more thing i quickly talk about is redshift for redshift is not really serverless right now i know the redshift is also trying to get there plus i have seen redshift administration is more than snowflake and bigquery so that's why i didn't talk much about redshift i think really the bigquery and snowflake have taken the market and they're moving in the right direction and redshift is still catching up with that i just want to thank you all for watching my video please subscribe to my gokiko channel like and share you know that's how i get rewarded so i would really appreciate that if you can do that thank you so much bye now